In this video, we'll take a look at cardboard sculpture, different artworks and inspiration, along with some project options and requirements so that you can build with this really neat and versatile material. So first off, your material list. You're gonna to wanna to go shopping per se, but all of these things should be things that you have access to. If you don't have access to them already, we can work around that and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So first off, you need cardboard. Any type of cardboard will work for this. You can use cereal boxes, gift boxes, shipping containers, corrugated cardboard. You can use toilet paper and paper towel rolls. You can use the back of notepads. You can use old puzzle pieces or or paper bags, anything that is that kind of thicker material. Uh, if you have a sketchbook, for instance, the cover on that sketchbook might actually work for this as well. So get creative and you can use any type of cardboard when creating. So you could also use utility knives or X-Acto blades, but these are optional. You also wanna make sure you'd have permission to use these knives before you just jump in. You wanna make sure your work surface is protected as well because these can obviously gouge any kind of tabletop or anything like that. So have an extra piece of cardboard there so you don't cut down through your table. If you have a fancy cutting mat, that's great too, but uh, not necessary. And again, scissors will work just fine for most anything. You can even rip up material. So if cutting tools aren't available, uh, you can really make do with uh, very minimal supplies for this. Adhesives are another optional material that you could choose to use or waste work around using glue or tape or things like that, but uh, it is certainly a choice. You might want to include this in your sculpture. So working with something like liquid craft glue, like Elmer's or tacky glue, if you have hot glue, sure, that's, that's an option. These are all optional. You want to make sure you have um, the ability or permission to use these as well. Color options would include markers, sharpies, paint, colored paper, accessories, things that you can find around the house. Uh, it's not necessary though, so this is another option. You could choose to add color to your piece using anything from recyclables that are colorful to magazine clippings to old cards. So again, just another option for you there. And you should have these things around. These should be things you have available. If you don't have it available, no worries. You can work without it. You just get a little creative in how you design. So you're gonna have a few different options. And your first option for your sculpture that you'll be creating, you could choose to make a wall hanging. So with this first option, you could create something that would hang on your wall. You could use thinner cardboard structures to create almost scroll effects that you can then assemble and hang. You can use sheets of cardboard and stack those different planes at different levels, have them cut into different shapes and potentially add a pop of color. These are all options for that wall hanging choice. If you're going with the wall hanging route, you might consider repetition. Maybe you've collected some toilet paper, paper towel rolls that you have access to. They're so light, they would be easy to attach and then later hang up on the wall. So this is a great option for you when choosing for your cardboard sculpture. Again, could use color or you could use a plain surface. That would be okay too. The exposed cardboard is also a nice look. Some of these examples do have color, but that's up to you if you want to add it or not. Your second option, just in the realm of sculpture with cardboard, so more general here, you can look at some of these sculptures that they're in the round, meaning you could spin these around and see the sculpture from all different sides. Each side would have something interesting to look at. In these cases, most of them are using some kind of attachment. In this scenario with the robot in the middle, I suspect there's actually some kind of adhesive in there, a glue, maybe some tacky glue or Elmer's glue was pressed on there over a period of time and then released and the glue held it all in place. Maybe they used hot glue. It's a bit, uh, bit difficult to say, but it could be a choice as you're creating if you want to use glue to keep things together. Although again, I'll, I'll hint later at that this more that you don't need to use adhesives. So here we have some more other creations. So you've got different things that are in the rounds and then also some that might be better viewed from one angle or another. So for instance, the bottom left, that piece maybe could almost qualify as wall hanging. Uh, you know, the back side of it looks the same as the front, the top maybe isn't as interesting. Whereas the piece in the middle, the lemonade with the lemon on the edge there, that would probably look cool from all sides. You could spin that around and it would really look neat in the round. 
So here's a great scenario of attachments that didn't take any adhesives. So if you don't have adhesives, you can still connect and attach. And I'll be sharing more resources on that later with some little tricks for this. Here's your third option when creating with cardboard. You could create a gathering. So in this case, you're thinking of multiple objects working together. So multiples or gatherings. So in the middle and the bottom there, you have almost a little family of characters that are gathered together. You could do groupings of different animals or characters if you're going this route. Your next option here, option four, faces and masks. You could choose to create a face. So these are all actually flat faces with cardboard stacked on it. The corrugation's been revealed in some cases, maybe a little bit of color or value was added with something simple like a marker or a Sharpie, maybe a pen for a little bit of subtle hatching. But generally, it's just cardboard here for the most part. Taking a closer look at that, you could repurpose some of those toilet paper rolls again by softening the cardboard and actually fold them in on themselves to create neat, funky sculptures or faces in this case as well. The idea of masks, you know, this doesn't necessarily need to be functional, something that you would have to wear, but you could design it in such a way to resemble that. So the one in the middle, for instance, I don't see that it has any kind of string on it to tie around your face, but it does look much like a mask. So again, this, this concept of faces or masks maybe would inspire you with what you want to create out of your cardboard. So here are your general steps. So no matter what option you're taking, these are still going to be the general steps for you. So first off, you have to pick an option. What are you going to create? We looked at four different options in inspiration previously. So this could be a wall hanging that you wanna create. It could be a large sculpture, like some of the cardboard sculptures we saw before. Some of those were even in the round, so they were sculpturally interesting from all angles. You could also make a gathering, and a gathering would be a grouping of multiple little figures or buildings. You could also choose to make a mask or a face. Next, you wanna make sure you've gathered materials and working already. You may have started to collect some things from around your studio spaces. Get those gathered and then find some more inspirational images online. You might have seen something that really jumped out at you here in this little presentation video, but you can go ahead and look up some of your own inspiration. So if you're thinking, you know, you want to go the mass route, you might want to go look up different faces or some more ideas like that, or maybe get an idea for an arrangement for your wall hanging. So certainly you're free to go look up some more information. Your fourth step is to sketch some original ideas. Plan it out. Have a concept in mind before you just start assembling. Uh, you might have a really happy accident when you start working and maybe it doesn't quite match the original sketch. That's okay, but you want to at least have a game plan when you go into this. Then step five, you can begin to cut your shapes. Step six, you'll assemble. Remember that glue is optional. You don't need to use glue if it's not available to you. And then of course, another option, step seven, you could choose to add color, but remember cardboard is really interesting on its own as a texture and as a form. So that is just a choice for you. So these are again, your general steps for moving forward. As you work, you wanna make sure you store your artwork safely. I'm expecting that this will take more than one class period. So because you won't submit your work today, you'll wanna keep it in a safe place so you can submit it by the end of next class. So now it's time to create. Look up more inspiration. I've provided some other resources that you may want to look through before you create as well. I'm expecting that your actual cardboard sculpture will take you about an hour and a half until you can collect all your supplies and actually build and create a final piece. So with that hour and a half allotted, just remember that'll spill over into next class. You will have some more time then as well. So keep collecting, looking around for ideas, use your resources that follow this video, and then start making. I can't wait to see what you come up with and those ideas as they are created.